I took, I was just looking actually at some experience from observing teachers, new teachers I suppose, or trainee teachers teaching. Um, and that is, I suppose, providing their um, classrooms or their students um, with tasks, speaking tasks particularly I'll focus on, uh, they don't really work. Okay, so what do I mean by they don't really work is that the teacher gives really vague instructions or um, throw some cards, which I'm going to do with you in just a moment and say, you know, talk about these. Um, so, um, going back a step, what was I going to say about that now? So, I am, yeah, drawing on trainee teachers, I suppose, but I, I think that also, as quite an experienced teacher, I'm, I'm guilty of this, kind of just throwing a question or throwing something at the students and saying, talk about it, There's, <laughs> I haven't had much time to plan this class. I don't know, is that your experience from, I think, you know, we've got people with lots and little experience and in between in the room, I'm sure. And have you had the experience where tasks, you know, you're like, oh, that wouldn't really go very well. Uh, so, I thought, so I'm going to give you a, a scenario in a minute, and then I'm going to draw on just some ideas from um, a methodology or an approach called task-based learning. Uh, are, are any of you familiar with task-based learning? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a fan, actually, but um, I don't know about the rest of it. It doesn't really fit uh, so easily into a syllabus that's largely based on course books and, you know, turn, turn the page and so forth. Uh, but I think there's some really interesting stuff. Um, in task-based learning, which we'll, which we'll learn, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so, where, what was I going to talk about? So, I want you to imagine for a moment, I've got these um, cards here, which I have to confess, the trainee in mind have rather nice, much nicer cards than I have, which are a few of these tiny little uh, cards here, which have on a series of, Neil, can you help me out here? Um, no, just tell me what they are, because no one can see them. So they are <laughs> musical instruments. We've got saxophones, and uh, we have a piano, and some drums, and other uh, exciting instruments. And this lesson, um, in particular, was you know in the context of a listening speaking lesson on music. On music, great subject. Enormous. Okay, so... Um, there was also a, um, some cards which I haven't produced uh, that had a couple of bands on them. Anybody from, uh, would like to, would anyone like to throw me a couple of bands actually, or name a couple of bands that maybe, let's say, an upper intermediate class made up of primarily Korean students, <laughs> Japanese students, and a couple of Portuguese, and I think a Spanish uh, student thrown in uh, for good measure, wouldn't recognise or be able to relate to. So, I, yeah. What's that? Slayer. Slayer. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> Any others? Because I, I just couldn't remember what they were. I think there was... Um, killers. The Killers. Okay, yeah. Even like anything from the 70s, you know, a couple of... ABBA. Bee Gees. ABBA. Ooh, ABBA, Bee Gees. Okay, great. <laughs> I don't know how to spell Bee Gees. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and maybe we'll put in Crowded House, because... Oh, I've got my Kiwi colours flying today, but they are New Zealand, not Australian, just for, <laughs> <laughs> for good measure. Um, so I want you to imagine now that i uh, giving you out some cards that have musical instruments on them and um, a couple of visuals, visuals of these bands. Alright? So you're in your groups, fantastic. Just the next person next to you. Uh, talk about the cards. Anybody want some cards so, for the experience? Just pass a few cards around. Right. Okay, thank you. How's it going for you? No comment. No comment, okay. Uh, no, but, but seriously, how is it going for you? What are you talking about? <laughs> what, what did you two talk about? Uh, you said, who do, they, they, do they play these instruments? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. alright, yes. good. So you're giving it a good go. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anybody over here? What did, Katya, what did you... Uh, you said these look like tennis rackets. 
Okay, so we're going off topic straight away. Right? Fantastic, even better. Anybody else? What did you guys talk about? We looked at the pictures and said, violin. Yeah. Violin, okay, great. Yeah. And um, this is kind of what happened in the classroom. <laughs> and I was um, assessing it, I was like, oh, okay, this is... Uh... But you know, the great thing about uh, what we call here free lessons, that is students come of their own volition to the lessons, is that we have a rather motivated bunch and, and they you know, they get a really good go and talk crazily about all the stuff for, for 10 minutes. Okay, so what would be the next step in the lesson? Feedback. feedback. Okay, so what do you think the, the teacher got for feedback? <laughs> Not much, but you know, there was 10 minutes speaking, so brilliant job done. Lesson over. Fantastic. Okay, so what was... Um, what was missing, do you think, from the, well, quite a few things, but let's see, what was missing from the task for, for you, great experienced teachers in the room? A question. A question. A question. Yeah, a really good question. So, therefore, purpose. purpose. Yeah, there was no purpose to the task. And if you can't get, uh, if you haven't got good feedback, you don't really know what you're asking, there's clearly not an objective, an objective or a... And actually, aim, aim or outcome. an outcome. I love the word outcome, don't you? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so let's go back a step and just see how uh, we could make this task much better. Okay, so I've just uh, robbed a few notes uh, from um, the Willis family. So just first of all, for those that um, who don't know, what is task-based learning? So task-based learning, or task-based language learning as it's also known, or task-based instruction, uh, really focus on the, on the use of um, authentic language and on asking students to do meaningful tasks using the target language. Okay, so, what does meaningful mean? I ask myself that a lot. It's a bit of a, a, a fancy word, isn't it? And the, what I take it to mean is, you know, what value is there in the task for the student? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Anybody have a, a, another idea? But there's something that they can really get out of it. I don't know about talking about those cards. We, I don't know if the learners gained a lot from that activity. So meaningful tasks, um, I suppose, and in terms of task-based learning, is that the learners are given a, a task, um, an activity to work on. Um, that there is a clear outcome. So it could be something as uh, complex and life, um, you know, as in life, like find candidates for a job and employ them and, and things like that. So that's quite, quite a serious task. It takes a long time. Or it could be, um, I was thinking, I've got some, uh, well, if I have time, uh, a game of picture hide and seek or make some quiz questions. You know, something that there's, students are very clear about what, is expected of them, and I suppose from a teacher's perspective, you know exactly what you're going to ask them at feedback, and how it might leap you into the next stage or conclude your lesson in a great way where you will go away feeling like we've learned something. Um, and I suppose assessment is um, primarily based on task outcome, okay? Um, so that is the completion of real life tasks. So real life tasks, I, I guess, again, are meaningful. Their value and students can actually relate to them as something that might be useful outside of the classroom. And maybe that's what Jim's talking about too, about strategies or how we can support our students have strategies that have, re, you know, take us outside of the classroom as well. So, um, of course, when we're talking about um, drawing on authentic language, this is language beyond perhaps just, okay, we're discussing the past simple. So all our... <laughs> All our practice and all our speaking today is on the past simple or the present continuous or whatever your language point is, uh, because we know in life, and perhaps this is what happens to the students outside the classroom too, they step outside the classroom, go to the shop, order something, and goodness me, it didn't all happen in the past simple or the present simple. In fact, there was five tenths all at once. So I, I think that task that students can really you know, get their teeth stuck into, I suppose, and draw on their existing knowledge. And I think what's also great about a task, I think in a TBL sense, is that it encourages, it, it has the learners work hard to draw on language that perhaps they don't have either. And so what that might create then is a hunger for language, right? We want our students to want more English. 
So I think I'm going off in a bit of a spiel now, but <laughs> what's occurring to me is that, as I say this is that this is actually um, could create motivation as well, I think, and that the idea of task-based learning is then following the task, there's analysis of um, the outcome or the process and the teacher then teaches into the gaps, okay, so that there's value added from the task. So, what language do the students need that they didn't have? What do they have problems with? And then we we move on and teach into that. Which sounds fantastic, doesn't it? <laughs> Just to me, anyway. So again, uh, working with face-to-face, uh, -face, upper intermediate, there's not often time to do that. Tap the board again. Oh. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so we've talked about confidence, motivation, they've become better communicators. Uh, moving on. Uh, the framework looks something like this. So there's prime, like many of the lessons that we prepare in our course books, there's a lead in and um, we've got to good bit. <laughs> uh, so we've got this task cycle. But I guess, I'm just going to scoot through these. So, what is a task? How could we improve on our talk about these cards? We need to ask ourselves a series of questions. And the more confidently we can ask, yeah, answer yes to each of these questions, the more task-like, the more meaningful, the more purposeful our tasks are. So does the activity actually engage learner's interest? It's a good question. Is it something we're interested in rather than the teachers? You know, if you're really into white witchery or slayer, it might not work for your students. Um, is there a primary focus on meaning? That is, working your way through the task. Is it meaningful? Does it have the value that we talked about? Is it something that students can relate to? Big question. Is there an outcome? My top tip, if anything from this, is if you're asking, is, does your task have an outcome? Think about feedback and work. I find planning for me, I work best working from the end right back to the front. So is there an outcome? What do your learners need to know either to progress to the next stage in your lesson or what kinds of things might you like to hear from them? So um, is success judged in terms of outcome? I can't remember what that means. And <laughs> does the activity relate to real world activities? Um, and there is my out clause here, this doesn't constitute a, like you get on the insurance ads on TV. <laughs> uh, so, just going back to our task here, does anybody have any ideas about how we could progress this, talk about these cards, to a purposeful, value-added task with a clear outcome? Could um, ask students what what pubs they've been to in Galway and what bands they've seen. Yeah. Sorry if you're relating it to the music. Stuff. Yeah, no, that's yeah. perfect. That's um, great. And Galway, yeah. especially if we're here in Galway, because we've got this incredible music scene, haven't we? Um, that students can't help but ignore. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, great. <laughs> I meant that in a positive way. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the things that keeps me here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, for anything else. I just personalise it for what instruments they themselves play as well. They could do, yeah, absolutely. Or other than the or yeah. What, what it, their favourite band, what instruments do they play? Yeah. What do they like about it? Fantastic. These are all moving a little bit more into uh, into something the students can get their teeth into and can relate to. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, obviously you can elicit, elicit band, bands from the students, not not your bands. So yeah. And, you know, I think I'm pretty cool with my bands, but the students might not think so, yeah. Um, I, I found a few others that might work could be a categorising task, where learners kind of categorise the musical instruments and um, rank, I don't know how you rank musical instruments, but you know, tasks that they, there was something to do. Um, I thought another group, thank you for the music in Galway, because I was just thinking over my porridge this morning, uh, what else um, could the students do? They could put a band together, couldn't they? you know, themselves. <laughs> choose, a, choose a band of their choice, perhaps, uh, and maybe choose some musical instruments and what would they do. Uh, taking it to next level stuff, how about we're going to busk uptown Galway. Yeah. <laughs> so they could choose their instruments, name the band, 
Uh, what would they sing and perform? How much money would they like to make? Um, where would they stand? Uh, things like, uh, what else did I come up with? Um, yeah, what, how would they organise themselves and so forth? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that might be a bit pie in the sky again. You've got, you've got some students that you just aren't really into music. That's the other thing, isn't it? Um, so I guess you, of course, going to knowing your learners and all of that. But good old free, t uh, free lessons and teaching practice. We don't know who our students are going to be, so you need to make something that's, that's down the middle. 